if we're done in five minutes, we'll be done. If the Lord takes <laughs> over and we're not, then <laughs> we'll just all get napped later. Right. But uh, <clears throat> the Lord said a couple of things to me this morning, and, and uh, I'm just to release them. The first word from the Lord is that there is a strong word of deliverance over your life. The second thing that the Lord said is that the attacks against your purpose will fail. Yes. And that nothing that the enemy has been warring against you to accomplish is going to be able to keep you out of the purpose that the Lord has been preparing you for. You have been in a process of preparation for something that is greater than you've been able to perceive. Mm -hmm. And so for the sense of hopelessness and a total lack of clarity, you've been just thoroughly bombarded. And the Lord said he is going to cut that off. There are angels that he's assigning to your warfare. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> Isaiah 54, verse 17, when the Lord was, was giving me this, he reminded, he brought that verse back to my memory. Yeah. And so I want you to read it with me. Isaiah 54, 17. No weapon... Formed against you. Keep keep saying it. And every tongue which rises against you in judgment, you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is from me, says the Lord. So, I don't know who needs to know it, but the Lord is stepping in and dealing with the enemies like He did with Job. You know, Satan comes to Job, comes to God to accuse Job. And Job doesn't know it. All he knows is his life, the landscape of his life changes, and everything looks like warfare and loss. And he can't stop the losses. And things seem to be spiraling out of his control. And he's having to process the warfare in terms of what's happening in the landscape of his life, his mind, his money his family, his, his health, his emotions. Uh, but then what happens is people come along and begin to accuse him. Right. And now he's in spiritual warfare in personal relationships. And the Bible doesn't tell us why God allowed it. We just know that a day showed up when Satan accuses Job before God, and God allowed him for a season to go through warfare. Mm -hmm. And just as that season of warfare began without Job noticing it and being able to do anything about it, God closed out the season of warfare. Mm -hmm. And the attacks against Job's life and the attacks against Job's family and the, the attacks against Job's pers uh, purpose were cut off. Mm -hmm. Why? Because God vindicated him. No weapon formed against you. The warfare that you have been in is not going to succeed, and the Lord is going to step in and put a stop to it. Amen. I don't know who needs to hear this today, but the word of the Lord, that there is a strong word of deliverance over your life, is what will govern your warfare. And the Lord is getting ready, and I say that in the sense that I just don't know. If I knew the moment, the day, the hour, the time, the instant, I would, I would tell you. But I'm telling you that the Lord, you're, you're about to see God, the results that God stepped in and dealt with the root of the warfare. Now, there are a lot of ways that you could identify how, how would I know this is warfare. I mean, just, you know, this is not a pretty season of the earth. There's a lot going on, a lot of volatility, a lot of stuff. I want to take it beyond circum circumstantial evidence. Okay. Here's the biggest way you know that you're in warfare. Isaiah 54, verse 17. The tongues that have risen against you to judge you. Accusation. <clears throat> And I'm not just talking now about people. Right. Job, Job had that. Yeah. But I'm talking about 
the evidence of the thoughts that have been assailing your mind and the accusations that accompany them. I want you to pay attention to what I'm saying. The bombardment of the assault, the mental assault you have been enduring is key evidence of the warfare, the spiritual warfare that you have been experiencing. There have been <laughs> accusations against your life because of the assignment that is upon your life. Because of the purposes that God has that he hasn't told you about. And the warfare has been a, a level of preparation. And God has preserved you in the preparation. But yet still in the preservation there's been a warfare of sorts. And the Lord said, Isaiah 54, 17, that he is giving you the word heritage means inheritance. Part of your inheritance is is that there is coming a vindication, but there's also going to come a level of clarity inside you that, that you're going to have what you need to rise up and put a stop mm -hmm. to the things that have been assailing your mind. And the enemy's been so subtle, he's tried to convince you that it's you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, there are times when we have some just weird thoughts. <laughs> it happens. But Paul makes it clear that spiritual warfare takes place when we're going when we're in a time where how do I know I'm in warfare? Because your your mind begins to be assailed by all kinds of things that normally it wouldn't be experiencing. Right. And this is a major key that the Lord wants us to understand. But the Lord said, There is a I've seen the warfare, and there is a strong word of deliverance over your life. And I am stepping in and I am cutting off. The accusation, because the purpose of accusation is to keep you out of the inheritance God has. It is an accusation of a lack of value, a lack of worth, and a condemnation that comes with it. And I, I feel strongly about this in terms of I sense it not emotional feeling or personal opinion I sense strongly that the Lord is actually even going to get ready to deal strongly with the agents of accusation that have allowed the enemy to work through them to war against you to bring you in a place where you are bound up jammed up and tied up as it were like as if you were in a court case that you got tied up in court, and it became all-consuming, and you're investing every resource you can to try to fight the case against you. As illegitimate as the case is. So the Lord said, Isaiah 54, 17, is my covenant with you. And it will not prosper. The warfare that you have been enduring is going to fail. And part of your inheritance is the voice of vindication. And that sense of being condemned is going to be broken off of your life. And the repetitive cycle of your seemingly being too weak to break it off of you and put a stop to it. The Lord says angels are going to walk in your home and give you help you have been without. From this moment forward, you will no longer war by yourself. And new strength is coming back to you. I am restoring strength in your mind, in your emotions, in your body. And your spirit will be vibrant with resurrection life. For I have seen the injustices done to my sons and daughters. And I am moving to remedy that which has been unjustly released against them. I've allowed it for a time because of what's coming on your life. And so the warfare has even been a, a season of qualifying, as it were. Even as Satan met Jesus in the wilderness and pummeled him for 40 days. And he's so empty at the end of that experience that before he can even move into, quote, a new season, step into his purpose, whatever you want to call it, he was so depleted 
from that warfare that God had to send angels to resource him humanly. Look at somebody and tell them angels are going to move in your house. Angels are going to move in your house. The Lord is, watch this, the Lord is visiting you with resuscitation. And he's moving you beyond the warfare. It will not prosper. The weapon has been formed and has been wielded relentlessly. Say this with me, but it failed. But it failed because my father has vindicated me. And he preserved me through the warfare. If what the enemy really wanted to do could have been done, you would not have made it. You would have lost your mind. There are some, I'm talking to people today, you'd have been dead. The devil wanted to take you out with a car crash. He wanted to take you out with disease. He wanted to take you out with suicide and depression. He wanted to get you, if he couldn't kill you physically, he wanted to get you out of the fight altogether where you'd give up and quit. But God says there is too much purpose that I have commanded into your life and the path forward is paved with my goodness. You will see the abundance of my hand. But just as Jesus went through the wilderness warfare where Satan battled him and insinuated against him every time, every time Jesus used his word on him, he insinuated if, if, if. That, that's a form of accusation. It's a form of warfare. He's accusing him. You're not. The son of God. You're not an overcomer because if you were, you would have overcome this by now. If you're really what God said you are, then why are you in a wilderness isolated? The Holy Spirit left you. You got no help. You're by yourself. You're hot. You're thirsty. You're tired. And, and there's a demonic entity assailing your life and you can't stop me from talking. What we understand through Jesus' model there is that there is a time when kings have to go out and fight. Yeah. <clears throat> there are seasons of warfare, and the Lord sent me in here today to tell you that's what you've been enduring. He sees it, and He's going to deal with it. Thank you, Father. And that there is a strong word of deliverance over your life. There's a strong word of deliverance over your family. Mm -hmm. There's a strong word of deliverance over the purpose that you've been even afraid of. You'll never be able to come into it. You'll never be able to do what you feel like God really has for you to do because you're so trapped in a cycle of warfare and accusation. God's going to deal with accusers. And it's going to be ugly for those who won't repent, who try to stop the agenda of God moving in the earth. I don't say that critically or condemning your judge. I'm just saying it, it will, there, God, God gives God is so gracious, He even gives His enemies space to get it right. Yes, right. Yes, but when that grace space is over and God begins to deal, the dealings of God are harsh mm -hmm. because God has a covenant to vindicate his children. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, one of the bad things about warfare is that it's almost when you're really in the fight, it's almost hard. I mean, you know it by faith, but you, you don't feel it. Yeah. It, sometimes you get in a place where it's hard to even even think that you're lovable anymore. I know by faith God loves me, but I sure don't feel it. I sure don't see it. If God loves me, why am I, why am I being inundated with all of this warfare? The Lord is saying the warfare is the, the level of warfare you're experiencing is reflective of the level of love that I have for you. Praise God. This is my Son who I love, in whom I am well pleased. And what's the next event? Demonic opposition to the revelation the Father gave him about his value to him. God didn't say to John the Baptist in the waters of Jordan when Jesus emerges out of him, he didn't say, this is the Christ. He didn't talk about Jesus' purpose. He talked about Jesus' value to the heart of the Father. Did you catch that? Yeah. He didn't talk about Jesus' purpose, what he'd been, his mission, what he'd been assigned to accomplish. He talked to him about identity and value. God validated Jesus' identity, his value, and his relationship with the Father. Mm -hmm. And the very next thing, Satan, in every level, attacked that. 
yeah, if you is. are who you say you are. Yeah. If you are who God said you are. Yeah. If that was legit, why is this happening now? If you were the son of God, how come you're so powerless in this place? Mm -hmm. The Lord said there's a strong word of deliverance over your life. A strong Hallelujah. word of deliverance over your life. Hallelujah. And the weapon that has been wielded against you relentlessly is going to fail in its assignment. Thank you, Jesus. Pastor, but it's been wearing me out. That wasn't his assignment. His assignment wasn't to wear you out. It was to take you out. Yeah. But it, it can't, let somebody in small tell me it can't take you out. It can't take you out. The, the warfare you're experiencing will not take you out. There, there is, hear me on this, there is a purpose on the other side of it, and you're being prepared through it. Praise God. God's going to protect. Say this with me. God's going to protect. God's going to protect. The Lord is going to protect. <clears throat> Because before you went into the warfare, that strong word of deliverance let's say that again, before you went into the warfare there was a strong word of deliverance over your life whether you heard it or not, God said it. Yeah. God guaranteed that you will emerge from this season of warfare successful and powerful and well equipped to walk out the purposes that are yet ahead of you and he's going to resuscitate everything that's gotten emptied in the process you've been in. Praise God. Don't judge what God's about to do based on what you've seen in the warfare you've been experiencing. Mm. The future looks nothing like the warfare you've been in. Praise you, Jesus. When Jesus is out there, isolated in the wilderness, battling Satan, it doesn't look like dead people rising. Doesn't look like blind eyes opening. Doesn't look like cities being turned upside down. Doesn't look like deaf ears being unstopped, lame people walking. Doesn't look like taxes getting paid through the mouth of a fish. Doesn't look like words of knowledge and gifts of the Spirit. Doesn't look like miracles and explosions of the power and glory of God. It doesn't look or sound like the revelation of God. In fact, Jesus isn't hearing anything except for what the devil has to say. I want you to consider the fact that the warfare that you've been in is because of what's ahead of you. But what's ahead of you doesn't look like the warfare you've been in. And the Lord wants to resurrect your hope today by letting you know that there is a strong word of deliverance over your life. I want you to stand all across this room. I want you to stand. I'm going to obey the Spirit of God. Father, you alone know who you put this. You gave me this word early this morning. It wasn't the message that I thought I was going to preach. But Lord, this is what you want to say. So what you want to say has been said. What you want to do, let it be done. I don't know, Father, who it is that's been in this place of warfare. But Lord, I thank you that you do not abandon us. You're the God of covenant preservation. So, Father, I pray that anybody who's been in warfare today, that they will experience victory in the fight. According to Isaiah 54, 17, no weapon formed against your people will prosper. And every tongue that rises against them in judgment, God, you're giving them the authority to, to reject it and to condemn it. For there is no condemnation on your sons and daughters. There is no rejection that the enemy can effect against your sons and daughters. There is no abandonment by you against your sons and daughters. But Lord God, there is an uprising. And I command right now, Father, that there be a mighty uprising in the spirits and the hearts and the minds and the bodies and the emotions of your people. Let resurrection take place in this moment. And let the atmosphere be filled with the life of your spirit. And God, we praise you and thank you that you're releasing angels right now to resource those who need to be resourced in the very areas that they need to receive this resuscitation from you. And Lord, I thank you that the purposes that are ahead 
they will reveal the why as to the depth of the harshness of the warfare that your people have been going through. And I thank you that there is your strong word, oh Lord God, your strong word of deliverance over their life. And they will feed at the table of deliverance and your promise will prevail and it is canceling every nefarious assignment and intention. For the missions of dark arts are falling short of their target. And those who have trafficked with demons to become vessels of rejection and abandonment and slander against you, says the Lord, I myself will cut off those who have wrongly sought to condemn in order to keep you out of the house of purpose that I have called you to occupy. I break warfare off of you. I bring you into rest and resuscitation. I bring you into the place of inheritance and promise. And know, my people, that I have greatly loved you. So, Lord, let it even be that just as you, you dealt with Satan, Job didn't hear it. Job didn't know it. All he saw was that there was difference, different outcomes, different experiences. And that difference manifested itself in restoration. Lord, I pray that you will begin affecting restoration in the lives of those who this word is for today that have been suffering the losses of warfare. You said the weapon formed against them will not prosper. That means it will fail. And Lord, let, let the proof of this word be manifest in the form of works of restoration that have your signature, your fingerprints upon them. That, that as you begin to move in restoration, it will be abundantly clear that it is you who is doing your story. Let the angels of God go on assignment today to bring the restoration gifts. That which resuscitates, heal, restore, deliver, repair, revive and then empower your sons and daughters like Jesus to be thoroughly restored and replenished and to move forward in the fullness of what you have purposed and equipped them to accomplish wherever you have called them to do it there are people we have been in warfare because of there are miracles we have been in warfare because of. There are seasons of purpose and there are places and levels of effectiveness in the work of God that we have been warring because of. There, we have been warring for the destiny of this nation. And Lord, I thank you that there are even those in the sound of my voice today, they've been enduring warfare because they were of their prophetic assignment upon the wall of the destiny of the United States of America. And maybe they haven't perceived it. They're like, why is the enemy hitting me like this? And you're saying, because the enemy only hits generals like that. You are no small member of my tribe. You are not insignificant. You carry the DNA of the destiny of a nation in you. And you've borne the battle and the scars of warfare so that my word might prevail. By la tande le for you will be known as repairers of the breach. Thank you, Jesus. And as you have stood in your place on the wall, you have been assaulted and assailed. And it is because of your place on the wall that you have come under the attack. But I say, lift up your eyes. For the purpose you carry has determined the target you've become. Let now your restorative works and your restorative actions begin to manifest in the lives of your people. Both internally, whatever has been stolen in the fight, 
let it be restored to the double. Lord, whatever has been stolen, whatever losses have been incurred, let inheritances replace them. Power your people to be thoroughly recovered, yes. totally resuscitated, gloriously repositioned into that new thing you started to suck. Talk to us about it. God, coming out of worship, we bless you for it. We thank you for it. Let healing flow everywhere where there's a broken place in this place today. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Come on, Thank you, Jesus. I feel like I'm done. You can be seated. I don't know that God's done, but I am. <laughs> in terms of uh, I'm not going to try to preach Luke 24 we'll save it hallelujah I want you to do this with me I, want, I do want you to let somebody know God's got good things on his mind he's got good things ahead praise the living God Lord have mercy God, deliver this nation yes, yes. from every oh, satanic and principality, every power, every... Let the prince of the power of the air be dethroned, O oh God. And let every dark agenda that seeks to bring this nation to a place of utter destruction from which it could not rise again, Stop that from happening. In the name of Jesus, we remind you, our Father, of every word you have spoken and every covenant you have with this nation. And God, let every attempt on the powers of darkness to destroy this, the foundation of this nation, let it come to nothing. Let no weapon formed against the foundations of this nation and your covenant with us. Let no weapon prosper. That's right. In Jesus' name. Manda. Kiriyas. Strike Babel. Yes. And scatter the counsel of the wicked. Jesus' name. Hallelujah. God, I pray that anybody whether physically in the room or watching this on online. Anybody who's bound, hurt, wounded, mm. oppressed, yes. suicidal, yes. demon-possessed, yes. come out and be free yes. in the power of Jesus' name. Loose them yes. and let them go. Strong and mighty is the hand of the Lord to, to deliver in this moment. Every stronghold be annihilated for the weapons of our warfare are not fleshly but they are mighty through God to the destruction of strongholds. Lord, we pray that you will deliver the masses in this nation from deception. From deception. Break deception. There is a veil of darkness that has descended like a blanket that has captured the minds of, of millions in this nation. They are deceived even in God's house. They are deceived. Their eyes are heavy and they cannot see. Their hearts are cold and they cannot feel. Their ears are dull and they cannot hear. Lord, deliver those who have given over to delusion. And deliver in light and in truth. Where deception has sought to prevail, make it fail. Thank you, God. Lord, for those, and I speak prophetically to those that the enemy has sought to imprison in fear. 
You belong to Jesus. You love the Lord, but you're living in a prison of fear. And the Lord says, I, I invite you to step through the door and come out of that cell. No longer be bound by fear. I feel the Lord working deliverances. Thank you. Thank you. The Lord says, if you will, if you will trust me, I will replace fear with courage. I'll give you a strong, courageous heart. And the things that have come against you will come against you no more. And furthermore, I hear the Lord saying prophetically, and this is a word for somebody. The Lord saying that the cycles of things that you have gone through, where there have been wave after wave of disappointment and loss, the Lord says, I changed that. I have covenanted with you that you will no longer go through that. I am removing it from your life. You will no longer go through that. And even as I said in Isaiah 54, this is as the waters of Noah to me. That as I said to Noah, the, no longer, as long as the earth remains, never again will, will water, will a flood destroy the earth. This is as that to me, the waters of Noah. No longer will that occurrence occur. Yeah. That cycle is broken, thank for the Lord has come to deliver. Yes, thank you. We thank you for it. Praise be Lord, we thank you for it. Like a shut on a door. Barakiti asadakai. Veranda shinta sede kondrabasa. Mm. And there is a, the Lord says that there is a spirit of Python that has wrapped itself around the economy of the United States of America. And the Lord said, fools sit in the gate and have invited this spirit to choke out the lifeblood of the finances of a nation. But if my people who are called by my name will stand boldly and embrace my covenant and declare what I have given them to declare and not give in to fear, Python will be shattered off of your economy. Furthermore, that which is sought to choke you out, if you will not fear, hear me, fear is the door through which the spirit of Python comes into your house and steals. And the Lord is saying, I will shatter its grip. I will cause it to let go and you will no longer be stolen from, says the Lord. For the pundits and the prognosticators speak death and demise, but where are my kingdom sons and daughters who will rise up with another report in them and who will believe that they have been raised up and they'll take up yeah. serpents. Yeah. And Python is the serpent of this generation that I am calling my people to rise up in this moment and take that serpent up in authority and break its grip. Thank you. For I will not allow it to steal from you, but your key is do not fear. Father, we come to before you today. We stand in the council of heaven and we align our voices and our declaration that the spirit of Python lose its grip. Its grip be shattered off of the economy of this nation, off the resources of this nation, and those of your people that it is trying to suck the life out of and steal their resources, whatever those are. We come against it in the authority of Jesus' name. We break it and we command its power be taken from yes, it. Yes. Loose them and let them go. Loose the American economy and let it go. And Father, may you deal strongly with everyone who sits in a gate of influence who has invited this dark spirit to come in and suck the life out of a nation. We break it, we shatter it in the authority of prophetic declaration. And we decree, Lord God, that your people will have room to breathe. Yes. Economically, financially, emotionally, spiritually, that they're changing in the atmosphere. Yes, thank you. And that we will not give in to fear. But we will stand in peace. And in rest, 
in our place on the wall, knowing what you have given us to believe you for. And it matters not who believes, but that we have, and that we have released that faith into the atmosphere of our situations, our homes, our families, over this nation. Thank you. Lord, the enemy has tried to use the warfare to so wear your people out. For the spirit of Antichrist has sought an advantage against the church, against sons and daughters of the covenant, but Lord, you're greater. Yes, you're greater. And you have revealed today your wisdom. And you have intervened in this moment. And we thank you for it. Amen. For there is a strong word of deliverance <coughs> over your people. Thank you, God. Come, I end. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you said two and a half years ago, you said the lion of the tribe of Judah is going to roar over this nation. Yes. So rise up. Yes. It is almost as if I can sense that the Lord is saying, I've been roaring. Why do you think everything's been exposed? Uh -huh. I've been shaking snakes through my roar out of the darkness. So don't misinterpret the manifestation. I'm cleaning the house. I'm cleaning the house. I'm shaking the jungles of the nations with my roar. And exposing what has been hiding in darkness. Seeking agendas and opportunities to destroy. Did I not say in my word? That the thief comes only to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I have come mm -hmm. that you might have a life, and that more abundantly. Thank you. 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 Every thief that has moved against your people. Jesus. That which he has come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Yes. To so annihilate that there can never be a resurrection. Jesus. But Lord, we thank you. You've cut that off. Yes. You've you. dealt, you've identified it, yes. and you're dealing with it. <clears throat> so we thank you for the strong word of deliverance that is over us. Oh, bless your name. Bless your name. Bless your name. Thank you. Lord. Mm. Mm. Behold, I have given you authority. Thank you. Yes. To yes. tread. Yes. I have given you authority to tread. Thank you, Father. Upon serpents mm -hmm. and scorpions. <coughs> oh, take your authority. I have given you authority to tread. What's been over your mind needs to belong under your feet. Thank you, Lord. I give you authority. <coughs> give it to you. You've got it. Use it. You say, what are my weapons? Your weapons are the words that I have given you. Your weapons are the worship that only you can give to me. Yeah. Do you not understand that the depth of the mystery of the tongues you speak by utterance of my spirit, mm. that there is authority and power? Yeah. That even when your mind is unfruitful, your spirit oh, is declaring great and mighty things, and that yeah. there is an authority in your spirit <clears throat> that far surpasses anything that could ever come from your mind. Oh, and it is in that place that you are prevailing mightily in war. Haven't I said that the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man is highly effective? Don't allow the warfare you've been in to get you to diminish the authority that you carry. And if you'll rise up and use that authority, thank you, Lord. these spiritual weapons that I have gifted you with, you will see the fruit of that authority. Praise you. Thank you, Lord. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank 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 you. I'm going to begin visiting you in ways that I remind you who you really are. Thank you. And I'm going to begin causing you to remember things. 
that once gave you great joy and once gave you great strength and focus. And as I, as I bring these things back into your remembrance, you will find a strength to prevail because of them. For one of the things the warfare has done is it has caused you to forget. And I say that not critically. I say it to let you know that I'm aware that the warfare takes a toll. But I am moving to recover all that was stolen from you. Thank you, Jesus.